Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Weekend Winners in association with Bet Victor. And on this week's show, we're going to be previewing Bet Victor Hunger for Day at Newbury, as well as the great St. Wilfred at Ripon. And we're going to take an early look ahead to the Judgment International at York. I'm back off my holidays. Big thank you to Enzo for standing in. Hopefully you two behaved yourself for him, Deck. Just about, yeah, just about. Uh, didn't behave ourselves with the bookies, though, did we? Sam's next best and his nap went in and uh, Enzo and I both put up new image who uh, won under Hayley Turner in the last race which was a, a nice little caveat to uh, given Enzo's um, uh, Shergar Cup uh, trivia yeah. that we finished He put with us on the spot yeah. didn't he, he with did, a yeah, Shergar yeah. Cup tricky questions. I, I know, I feel like. slightly like I should have thrown you some curveballs mm -hmm. now along the way. I've been far too kind to <laughs> yeah. along, along the whole time. But uh, at least you got the trivia right and the winner. And Napa next best for you, Sam. Yeah, really good week. Uh, fingers crossed we can keep the form carrying on. Kate, I hope you're well rested from your holiday and ready Very. to find us a winner or two. <laughs> yeah, hopefully so. It's a tricky enough weekend. It's one of those kind of slightly awkward weekends. We've got interesting racing, but slightly tricky that I'm returning for. But Sam, we do have an offer though. We do. Big Victor. weekend for Bet Victor, obviously sponsoring uh, at Newbury. Uh, bet 10 on Hunger for Day on racing, and you'll get £45 in free bets. The breakdown of that is £35 for betting through the card on Saturday at Newbury. And then we've thrown in £10 for the brand new Premier League season, which I'm sure we're all looking forward to. Mm. As a Crystal Palace fan, I've been watching my team get taken apart so far this summer. So <laughs> fingers crossed we sign some players. Uh, Deck, I know you're a big, big Man United fan, so not having too much of an exciting summer for you. Um, to, to be fair, um, I watched the charity Shield or the Community Shield, whatever it's called these days, and I thought it was the best United played in a while, but they still lost on penalties, so there we go. <laughs> Normal order has been really exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. massively all looking forward to all got our biases now, clearly, <laughs> as well. But uh, make sure, though, to head to the At The Races website to take advantage of that offer. I was also intrigued who the AI jockey was. In I was thinking that program. as well, what yeah. Was that? It was like Young Declan Rick. I thought it was Charlie Bishop or something. I was trying to make it up. I'm, I've got, I'm got my glasses on, I'm blind. Oh, I've got mine on and it still hasn't <laughs> helped, trust me. Right, we better get stuck into the action, really, yeah. hadn't we? But before we do, just a reminder, as ever, to please do gamble responsibly. Our tips are not guaranteed to win, but we will still do our best to point you in the right direction. Right, we're beginning with the 150 at Newbury. This is the Bet Victor Jeffrey Freer Stakes Group 3, three year odds and over, over a mile five. Dear old Alazi, the character that is, is heading the way. Does carry the penalty, though, on the back of that win last time out. Four to five favourite deck. Play or lay? Um, oh, I don't know, because I don't know what the ground is like. Uh, Newbury been putting yeah. down an awful lot of water, but we don't know how much they put rain. down. Yeah. And we've had rain. Um, and we've got no go and stick reading, so I have no idea. Um, but it, it, look, we've only got five runners. But strangely enough, for a staying contest, I think it's going to be a well-run race. You've got Al Karim will go forward. Sumo Sam likes to get on with things. And... Uh, uh, Roberto Escobar also likes to go forward. So I think it ho on paper it sets up like being a good uh, test over the trip. And I just wo wonder, could that find out al -Azi? I always felt at times uh, over 12 furlongs, albeit in Group 1 company, that he was just coming to the end of his tether in terms of stamina. But if it's a, a sit and sprint race, he's going to win. Absolutely no doubt because he's got the gears and he's got the class of these. But there's two or three horses in here that could make it a test. And if it turns into a bit of a war of attrition and the ground isn't too quick. I think with Al Kareem getting three pounds, I thought he was be a bit of a sporting bet uh, against the favourite. He's a really likeable, honest and straightforward horse. This was his seasonal debut at the start of the, the campaign. Uh, he ran a, a really nice race, maybe took a little bit of a blow here before rallying again. But just watch how he finishes out his race. He puts his head down and he gallops out. There's plenty of stamina in there. And if al was to get a bit of an inefficient ride um, and can maybe eyeball this fella too soon, he could maybe get out stayed late. That's how I'm, I'm seeing the race in terms of a bet. I just don't want to back al with the penalty at four to five. But the ground, I think, is the big key here. The softer the ground, basically, the better for al Karim. But it's not. It's obviously not going to be soft, is it? No, we're going we're gonna to have to send Sam out, basically. Suited and booted. Hopefully you've got some wellies or something to replace the shoes. Get that, we need to send you out onto the track. Get that heel into the turf. Yeah, just to be needing how... wellies, guys. Let's just, it'll be fine. I think the ground will end up good. I, how close to good it gets, mm. I don't know. I mean, we have got a couple of dry days now. Um, we're recording this Friday morning. Kate, I thought this race was horrible. We might sponsor it. But it's a <laughs> very, very difficult punting puzzle. Um, 
If uh, I said that now, I'd get a kick up the you backside. Would. You will be replaced next yeah. week. <laughs> I think this is, this is, but this shows where we, we need a bit more depth in British racing. And Al Azi, for me, has made a fool of me twice this season, given that I backed him to, to win on his seasonal reappearance and he got beat by Phantom Flight, which I think we're going to see the clip of here. Uh, um, and we were at Newbury. He's entitled to have needed this. And then he goes to Goodwood, where I took him on. And I didn't think Goodwood would suit. And he, and he wins, which probably just shows how classy an animal he is, even at the ripe old age that he's reached now. Um, it's a very tentative pick on the favourite for me here. And it's more because there's a lack of depth in behind. Um, deck selection, I would just wonder, deck this time of year he doesn't mm. seem to win it in the height to... of summer is yeah, he? the spring he, or the awesome for him isn't he it? sort of likes to bookend the season doesn't he with his better performances so yeah i i, I kind of came down on lrc the other three i struggle to really make strong claims for if we got if we'd had more rain maybe sumo sam would have been of interest but yeah i'm a tentative vote for lrc but i wouldn't be going too crazy at the price no, four to five. He is just that ultimate horse to divide opinion, isn't he? And don't worry, Sam, I have got him completely wrong on both starts this season as well. I sided with him on that reappearance, took him on then last time out, and he's done the absolute role reverse on either of those <laughs> occasions. So hopefully you and I will both be getting him right with this one. Because as you said, when we were just seeing that recent start then from him at Newbury when he finished second, that just didn't work out for him. Over the 10 furlongs there, hold-up tactics just did not suit in a steadily run race. Now that was a race that he had won the season prior before he went on to also win his next start. So he's followed a similar enough path this season with that good early form, but he did sustain it to his next start last season at least when he finished second in a group three at Leopardstown. So for all he can be a monkey at times, we know that he's actually more likely than not to give his running. It's just the price factor that you do have to really take into account. And of course, the three pound rise. But uh, yeah, I'm slightly concerned about the trip, especially if Al Kareem and Sumo Sam take each other on going forwards. But I just hope he's got the class uh, to go forwards here and to be able to pick them up late in the day. So we're both with T Rob Dalai. Third time's the what charm. Is going, <laughs> what is going on? I know. We just love a rogue this year. Is that, uh, Deku, do you like Yeah, it? I'm going to go with Al Kareem, but it's a bit of a little guess up um, because we don't know what the ground is, do we? No, and we will be sending Sam out there onto the track to get live updates, though, to us <laughs> back here. Right, we move on to the 335 at Newbury. Now, this is a Bet Victor Hungerford Stakes Group 2 contest. Three rods and over, over seven furlongs. Now, English Oak, 11 to 4 heads the market. But, of course, we do have previous winners, Jumby and Witch Hunter, in the field as well, Sam. Yeah, uh, just a seven, which is a little bit frustrating from an each-way angle point of view. But I think the market's got this right with the pair at the front. I'd say English Oak's profile's probably just slightly less sexy, though, than Kilcooley, who I'm going to come down on the side of. Now, this race, since it changed just a couple of years ago and obviously got a slightly upgraded in status, um, a few three-year-olds have tried it and run respectively without winning. Um, previously to that, we've had five winners since 2010 in there at the three-year-olds. And I think he's the really well-equipped three-year-old. We're watching him here at Royal Ascot where he just gets beaten by Harton. But I thought this was an absolutely massive run um, in hopefully the similar sort of ground that we're going to get for him uh, come Saturday. Um, last time out at Deauville, if you just read back through the comments, it was quite interesting to see. He kind of was made a good start to the race, and then just as the two groups converged, horse got in his way, and that was kind of the end of the race for him. Just got a bit too lit up. But he remains, to me, very much on my radar for Harry Charlton. I really like this horse. I think he can take a step forward uh, by Kingman. There's a lot to like, and I just felt... Yeah, he gets a little bit of weight from his elders. There's a reason he gets that. But he's the type that could just take a step forward. And, you know, you look at who he's up against. Where's the pace coming from? That's going to yeah. be a question Big I've question. got for Dick, my pace expert, because yeah. I can't see any. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It, uh, this race is setting up in complete contrast to the, the Jeffrey Freer, where you've got two or three frontrunners in here. There's no horse that likes to go forward, and it's that's kind of made even worse because Kikuli, for me, is a really powerful, strong travelling horse. He, he's he's a big boy. He's powerful, and I do think cover in a gallop is really uh, key to him. It'll be, uh, it wouldn't be surprised to me now if Oshie Murphy bounced him out and, um, and, and you know, just didn't fight him. But Tiber Flo is another horse who can be keen, likes to close from the pace, the same with which Hunter as well and I just thought with uh, a lack of pace on there I wanted a really straightforward horse who's got a, a change of gear and that was English Oak. Um, now he started the season rated 90, he's now rated 108.
eight, and he even had a Royal Ascot win um, on his CV now here, winning there. Was it the Buckingham Palace he won at Royal Ascot? Like the race set up perfectly for him on the stand side. It looked like he had a, a pacemaker in there to do a nice job for him, and he, he just travelled so well down to the two, and you can see how well he quickens there. But what the good thing about this lad is he's so straightforward. Uh, the only negative you could maybe say is he can be a little bit slow from the gates, but he's got good tactical speed. He's straightforward. Whether there's a few of the horses in here pulling their brains out, I hope this lad will be travelling sweetly in the hands of James Doyle, and I hope that a uh, more efficient way of racing will get him home. It's just it's a funny race, isn't it? You both said it there about the pace angle in this one. Mm. And English Oak, for me, I know that he bolted up at Royal Ascot. We've just seen the clip of it there. But I feel that a lot of people just automatically assumed going from handicap company up to group that he was just going to make that natural transition up to it. So if I was going to take him on with that angle last time out in a group two, why would I side with him again at a shorter price now this time around in another group two? An easier group two, admittedly, mm. than he faced last time out. But again, price dictated. Frua really liked the horse and he probably would have learned plenty from that group experience last time out to be able to take forward. Yeah, that was, a bit, that was a really strange race. It was. So that nothing landed a blow. And he I... twisted his shoe as well, I think. Yeah, exactly. And I think Richard Brown, who's their Wathnan race and race manager, also felt he was a little bit flat. So mm. um, there, there were excuses on the day, but uh, you're right to point them out, given his favourite. Yeah, that's it. That's all it was, was the fact he was at the head of the market and Kukuli then, of course, on the back of last summer. I just want to see more from him. So I sort of started to go through them all and Witch Hunter was therefore the one for me. Stop pulling that face now. <laughs> Good old Witch Hunter. Now, this race last time out at Chester just did not work for him. We know he's a, he's a straight track specialist, seven furlongs or over a mile. I think he's better over seven. So he went to Chester. You know what you're going to get with him with his hold-up style. And therefore, when he goes to a track like Chester, you know you're going to have to take your medicine. It's probably less likely than more likely to not work out for him, basically. But this was a, a feasible run all the same from him. And uh, and as I say, you're getting more of a price now about him back to a straight track. And of course, he did win this race last year when he was 12 to 1. And that was with some of the top seven furlong protagonists of the time in that race as well. So yeah, last time out, Chester didn't sue him. Wouldn't be too harsh upon that listed effort and hopefully coming back here. 9 to 2, I think it's a mm. feasible enough price for him. So yeah, which hunter for me? Deck just uh, I'm going to finish with the Tracy's trends to give my mm -hmm. horse a final plug. Four-year-olds, seven of the last ten winners of this race. English Hawk is four-year-old. Mine is five. Great. Sam? Uh, Kilcooley for me. And Kate, I think you'll get a bigger price about your selection. That's I've I'm got hoping. a feeling oh. you might be one of the only people out there that fancies last year's winner. OK, that's, that's reassuring. Right. That's yeah. a dirty dig. It's her first time <laughs> back after a holiday. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, you can have your bigger just... price because you're the only one who likes it. Thanks, yeah. Sam. Thanks so much for that. Well, if you also like Witch Hunter, do let me know that I'm not the only one and hopefully we will still be getting a bigger price about him all the same. But do let us know in the comments section below who you fancy. Now, before we move on to our next race, a reminder as ever then to hit subscribe on YouTube so you never miss an episode. Now, we are moving to Ripon. This is for the 320, the Great St. Wilfred Handicap, three rods and over, over six furlongs, of course, the feature at Yorkshire's Garden Race Course. Ten-year-old, dear old Summergard, beaten ahead in this last year and an agonising watch if you had sided with him. Heads away at nine to two. So, Sam, is this a plot job for him? I mean, it's just a standing dish, isn't it? And <laughs> it's fantastic. He turns up every week, he runs his sort of race and we go from there but it does help make the market here I, I think he's too short personally at nine to two given you get extra places each way for you know more or less anything else in there looks a feasible option up against him in terms of a bit of value maybe um, there are a few that I liked here uh, Manila, Manila Scouse is very much on my short list the right connections for this race the right age but I actually thought Misha Cody last year's sixth in the race was way overpriced and we're going to watch the replay of that here and he was kind of you know this was a very fair effort, but this actually came off a mark of 86. And thanks to a few flat, flat efforts since, he's now down to a mark of 79. And I think the run at Newcastle over the furlong shorter sort of showed that there was plenty still in the tank. And I think this has definitely been a bit of a target. It's been off since then. I'm sure he'll go well. And like I say, I think the ground as well doesn't have to worry about that. It's going to be drying conditions. There's a winner on good to firm. I don't even think it'll get quite that quick, quick at Ripon. But... Yes, he's a little bit back there, but I felt that it was a good enough run to suggest off a few pounds lower. 
He's not that much older. He still fits the trends as a five-year-old. I thought that was a massive price. Uh, well, interesting that we've seen that VT of last year's race because the far side came to the fore, didn't they? And obviously, we don't know where uh, where they're going to race. Um, that part of the track there hasn't been. I don't think I can't remember the last six furlong massive field sprint here at Ripon where they you know they kind of divide. Usually, they just come stand side, don't they? But I think a lot of the pace here, especially with uh, Radio Gugu and Ignator, they are all drawn low. So I think there's kind of strength and depth and better pace draw, uh, drawn low. So I wanted to be with a horse drawn low and that, that's actually a Kitai for who's now trained by uh, Michael Appleby mm. who had a, a wonderful uh, week at Goodwood while I was away. I heard someone told me he was the champion trainer he was there. top trainer. Yeah. Fair play to him. Uh, Mrs Appleby, she's got two great training sons, Charlie and Mick, mm. and you know, they're both doing the family very well. Uh, but anyway, we digress briefly <laughs> as Kitai used to be in training with Charlie Johnson. Um, they paid €150,000 Euros for her as a, as a yearling. She's a well-bred daughter of No Nay Never. Um, took a little couple of runs to get going for uh, the Appleby Yard, but she started this turf season with a really eye-catching run at, at Newmarket. I thought she shaped an awful lot better than the distance beaten that day, and maybe the hill just found her out. She then went to Goodwood on a much sharper track, uh, a change in tactics um, uh, on faster ground again, and I thought she was very good. I just hope she wasn't flattered by racing closer to the standside rail than the few in there, but she looks progressive. She's in winning form, and she's going to be a nice little ride for uh, Joe Mason to pick up there so uh, I thought 13 to do was definitely on the skinny side in this race I think she actually is bigger now but uh, there's lots to like in here and I think she's drawn on the right side I was going to say you got the draw mm. yeah that's going to be a massive fact because it, it is it's so hard to weigh up at Ripon at the best of times when you've obviously got smaller fields the majority of the time at Ripon exactly where you want to be drawn anyway let alone when you've got a field size of this nature to try and figure it out and just watching the VET then who, who knows really in this who race knows? So, yeah who knows who I mean knows? I know that's our job <laughs> Yeah. But at the same time, allegedly, who yeah. knows? Yeah, allegedly. But uh, yeah, I am with though the aforementioned Radio Gugu in here at seven to one, who's been clipped in a bit as well from her earlier prices. Now we're going to see her. This was just nine days ago in the racing league when she finished second in a handicap over five furlongs, beaten just under two lengths at Chepstow in the mist and the rain. If you can see any part of this uh, VT, but of course she is back in distance here on easier. Uh, she was back in distance in this race, I should say, on easier ground as well. No match for the winner, but still gave her running. Now, she's able to run off of the same mark in the Great St. Wilfred off of 89, though, which I still think sees her well treated. For all, she's had these consistent runs at around this mark of late, mm. and uh, but with the right conditions, back up in distance, things just might fall right for her this time around, back over a course in distance that she won over in May. So, 7-1 to one Radio Goo Goo for me, so uh, yeah, I'm going to stick with Mr. Cody, but I might have a saver on Manila Scouse as well. And I think you both made nice cases for, for your selections. It is the sort of race you should... I could never put Stop people... Stop trying off. to be nice to us now because you were found out being mean <laughs> to Kate. I, I, I can't put anyone off having a couple of selections in the race. Like <laughs> there you go, Deck. You're allowed another one. Very Chuck into a mix. Um, well, I actually originally really liked Manila Scouse and then I went oh. through the, the the pace of the race and I just thought, her being, or thought the horse being drawn high um, could count against her. I'll stick with one. I'll take a take. OK, well, at least we've got to see Vanilla Scouse in that as well. So you two in some sort of agreement. But uh, anyway, we've got prices all down the board then for our selection. Again, do let us know in the comments section below who you fancy. But it's time for us to head over to the sofa to look ahead to York on Wednesday, as well as giving you our best bets for the weekend. Now, of course, one of the feature races of the entire summer is the Group 1 at Judgmont International Stakes up at York. It comes at us on Wednesday. So we're going to have an early look at the race. Now, of course, the race still for three-year-olds and over over 10 furlongs. City of Troy, the favourite, Sam. Are we expecting a stellar performance from him or more sort of workmanlike, such as last time out? Well... That's why I thought I was really wanted to focus on him, and I appreciate it. Four to seven, he's a price. Oh my God, four I think to a, seven! I think a lot of people. How is he four to seven? <laughs> I water. Well, I'll, I'll try and make the case for him. He's four to oh, seven. Um, I've got to try and defend that now, haven't I? Yep. Um, this is listen. I do think if you took in isolation that performance last time out, you would be scratching your head. But I think the sheer confidence that they have that they're going to keep him at that trip when there are so many alternative options towards the end of the season that they could send him to that would be 
an easy, this is not going to be an easy race. You know, you look at some of these top class races, they cut up. This on paper to me looks an absolute cracker, as we'd always mm. expect with a judgment. They are keen, I think, Deck, to really put their authority on this division. And I think he can do that. The Sandown run, yes, it was disappointing. I expected fireworks and it wasn't the strongest field. And we got what I would say was a very moderate effort that left us all a bit disappointed. Mm. But he still won. And that came in soft ground. We are going to get an entirely different ball game at York next week. Mm. You're going to get good to firm, proper racing ground, proper pace in the race, a lot to aim at. And I think we will see a vastly improved performance. Would I want to take four to seven right now? No, my point would be I think you will get bigger on the day depending on who else lines up. I think at the moment you can sit and watch that price and he may well drift because I don't think there'll be as much market confidence because people will understandably think like you will, which is... I can't back him at that price, then he'll drift out and I think you'll see some market confidence. I think mm. we'll see a different horse. Well, yeah, exactly. Like there's 16 stood their ground um, at the five day stage and uh, I'd, I'd nearly forgotten about White Birch because we haven't seen him in a little while. You know, he's beat a Gus Roden earlier in the season. You know, this is a really competitive race. Now, it might cut up a little bit because I think um, Los Angeles obviously has got the option um, of uh, the Great, vault, great, the vault, great vault, Voltager. Yeah. Uh, Blue Stocking has got the option of the Yorkshire Oaks as well. And uh, White Birch maybe could miss here and go straight to the Irish Champion Stakes, especially if the ground is quick. So it might cut up a little bit, but I still think we're going to have a, a proper race. And that's why I just could not have uh, City of Troy at 4 to 11. Uh, I think as well with him, he could be a 12 furlong horse. I really do. I think, you know, in the derby, he showed how well he stayed. Like, how he travelled that day and how he hit the line. Like, the engine on the horse was just incredible. I just wonder, could he get a little bit tap for toe? Uh, the second favourite in the race was also a 12 furlong horse, given he, he bolted up um, over 12 at Royal Ascot as well. And I just... I just don't get why Zarakim is so big in the betting. Now, we did the show last week. We had an anti-post look at this race, and he's he's 18 to 1 with the boost on the BetVictor website. So please make sure you check that out. Uh, there you go, Sam. Job done. Um, <laughs> but yeah I, just, I, yeah, I don't get why he's such a big price. He was second to a Gus Road. Now, you could say he was maybe a little bit flattered because he came um, from near last off a strong gallop. But, you know, he's ground versatile. He's trained by a good trainer, in Jer Jerome Renier, who's not afraid to come to the UK, which, uh, which is brilliant. And, you know, no, that was a, a career best. I just, I could easily see him finishing, you know, in, in the first three here. I'm happy to back him each way at that kind of price. And each way price as well then. Yeah, lovely looking horse, isn't he? And yeah, if you weren't willing to back City of Troy at 4 to 7, you definitely weren't at 4 to 11, as you said either. Yeah, you so shortened him up. You're really shortening <laughs> him up. No, we were just thinking about him getting a drift near him. Oh, did I say 4 to 11? <laughs> right. Maybe subconsciously, <laughs> actually, think he'd bolt up. Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe actually. that's a that, Yeah, there's value in that price now. Oh now that we've given him that, 4 to 7 then about City of Troy is pretty eye-wateringly short at this stage, isn't it? But Zarek and 14 to 1 then for Deck. And uh, and a really interesting horse as well, because you also mentioned White Birch. And White Birch, oh, I love this horse so much. I think he is possibly one of the most talented. Well, definitely, I think he's the most talented older horse of mm. uh, the middle distance uh, division. But uh, I just don't know yet if we're definitely going to see him. That's why at this stage, when we're talking about this race now, I can't put him up because I don't know yeah. if he's going to go. Alf is going to go. We love our flailer. He loves York and he's going to go. So why would I not put him up at eight to one? Obviously, we don't have the without market just yet, but the each way angle, though, at this stage would be a likeable way oh, to go Oh, look who finished it. second in this now, race. Look, exactly. Oh. Nice little intertwined form. We didn't plan this, did no, we? we? Didn't. No, we really didn't. Of course, at Royal Ascot in the Prince of Wales' stakes, where this was won by August Rodan. Now, Zarakem finished second in this. Our flailer back in fourth, but this race did not go in our flailer's favour whatsoever then um, this time around. We've talked about this race plenty in the past but we know that unlike the other tracks York is just his bread and butter he's three from four there the only time he was beaten at York was when he finished second on his handicap debut and his first run at York look how hard he tries all the way to the line <laughs> such a lovely horse so Alf Layla for me each way then at eight to one at this stage or I might even just have with with the win as well just in case City of Troy fluffs his lines I was going to say Kate I wanted to hear more confidence but you two want to take on City of <laughs> Troy and you're talking about without each way come on if you think he's too short you've got 
got that traditional market <laughs> where you're getting massive prices. We do see you, short prices. You beat. do know Mr. Tabor isn't watching. <laughs> if I bottled the Premier League Villa tee up earlier on, I'm definitely <laughs> bottling the putting up to take on City of Troy for the win stakes then in the Judgment International. But that's our early look ahead then to the big race itself. Again, do let us know who you fancy for the Group 1 in the comments section below. But of course now is the all-important part, our best bets for this weekend. So, Deck, not an easy weekend, but again, Bet Victor traders, they'll be boosting our nap. So make sure to head to the at the races.com slash weekend winners website. Then take advantage of that. Who are we boosting for you? Yes, uh, I'm going to take a, a bit of a swing with the nap this week. I, I, I think there's a horse badly overpriced in a handicap at Newbury on Saturday, and that is Spanish Blaze. I'm so pleased. I'm so pleased. <laughs> <laughs> For the uh, Marcus Dragoning team uh, with, with Haley Turner going to ride. It's a bit of a strange race. There's quite a, a plenty of exposed horses in that race. Um, horses whose form maybe doesn't entitle them to be as short as the market suggests. Uh, but this guy is just being really progressive. He's a lovely son of uh, Phoenix of Spain. Um, he, he can be a little bit keen going at times, but he's settling down nicely with racing this season. And he's drawn next door to our good old friend Letha Levi. Here so I he think is, you is. get a lovely little toe into the race from Le uh, from Levi. And hopefully Levi doesn't spoil the party again here. I think Spanish players is a, is a crack in each way bet uh, this weekend and is undoubtedly my best bet of the weekend. The next best we've already touched on is going to be English Oak and the Hungerford. Um, it's just a, a really likeable, straightforward, honest horse who in a race lacking pace I think that's going to count for plenty against proper hold up horses and then the long shot we're going to go well I'm maybe cheating I'm, the long shot's going to be Catal at, uh, at Ripon in the great St Wilfred I just think uh, she's drawn on the right side seems to be finding her straps now for the, the Mick Appleby team uh, probably cheating a bit at the price but we might get a little bit bigger Oh, do you know what your nap has been boosted to as well? The trade has been very, very generous with you. 11 to 1 on the screen there. Do you know what Spanish players has been boosted to for you? 14s. Oh, OK. You kind of burst my balloon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got yeah. short of that. Yeah, exactly that. 14 to 1. No South African trade. Yeah, well, I was expecting African. like a uh, 101 to <laughs> 17 or something. Or something mental. Perhaps beat our dear old friend Lethal Levi. Day 132 of me asking for my <laughs> Lethal Levi plushie. Yeah. I've been wishing Spanish Blaze though all the luck. And again, do make sure to head to the website to take advantage of that boost in screen for Dex. Very brave nap. Sam, are you going to go quite as uh, brave? No, but I am going to butt heads with Rixie and I think nearly nice. all three of my selections, which is um, always good fun, Deck. Uh, we're going to kick off with my nap and I'm going for the Bet Victor Hungerford where I, I am going to put up a horse that I just hope will improve and continue to step forward. Uh, a three-year-old is a big ask, but I thought Kilcrulli was just the right price for me at three to one. Top rated in the field as well, and I really, really hope it's a big day for Harry Charlton, clearly, because uh, my next best comes in that three o'clock where Dex after Spanish Blaze. But I'm curious about this horse, Susanna, who is now down to a mark of 81. Last seen off that mark winning at Ascot. Um, this season sent off in four races, favourite for three of them and well back each time. Clearly, someone believes that this horse is able to achieve at this level once again. Um, don't need to be slowly away. Do need to see the horse really hit out the stalls quickly because that can be a little bit of a weakness. But uh, I thought 15 to 2 was a very fair price. And then my long shot will come at Ripon uh, in that race that we talked about earlier. Uh, Michelle Cody for me, I just feel like this has probably been the target. Sixth in the race last year would probably just have nabbed you a place uh, a few pounds lower than that effort last year. And I think still retains enough form to be competitive here. Is drawn in 11, which may make it a little bit tricky. Jockey's going to have to make a choice early on. But right down the foot of the weights, the right age for the trends, loads to like. You two on the trends bandwagon then, yeah. <laughs> 14 to 1 about Michelle Cody up for Rippon's feature race. But Kukuli then at the nap and 3 to 1. You've got the minor little boost though, but still a boost all the same, which we will happily take in some oh, minor race. Oh, that is stingy. <laughs> I'd say the traders think oh, my, my horse got a better chance than yeah, yours. Absolutely. I was going to say, <laughs> probably that's where the direction is going actually. Some things never so change. Weird, isn't it? Yeah, they're subtly hinting 100 to 30 mm. then from 3 to 1 for Sam's nap then to be boosted. Kukuli again, head to the web 
website to take advantage of that. Now, the reason I have napped this horse is because of the boost. Again, I just love boosting a rogue. <laughs> Didn't work out with August Rodan, admittedly, but I'm hoping Alazi it's going to work out for him. Because as we were saying beforehand, it just feels on the skinny side, the original four to five. Well, that he is at present for Alazi. Of course, then in the Jeffrey Freer. But I hope he's going to get the trip. I hope that the two horses are going to go out in front, Sumo Sam and Al Kareem, and really butt heads. And then they might just give him that perfect tone to the race, lull him into it, and then he will see out the trip. So Alazi for me, I'm hoping class will come to the fore. Witch Hunter then in the Hungerford is going to be my next best bet. I'm just hoping I'm going to get slightly bigger than nine to two as you I think that you time. will, Kate. Don't I worry. think I will. I I because he's he's such a consistent type, but he just is turning those into wins, those consistent runs for him, isn't it? But straight track then back to Newbury as well. And he's got all the form lines really want to be focusing in on then from this season. So hopefully a little bit bigger, but uh, which onto then. And then Spanish Blaze. I mean, I've got, I've got a long shot. You've gone nap. So we've gone slightly different. I actually missed that in the notes. <laughs> yes, I have gone Spanish Blaze then for the long shot. Again, for all the reasons you were saying. Quick enough turnaround, 16 days then for him, following that third at Goodwood where he just tended to over race, didn't he, over a mile there. So back to the seven furlongs. Should be uh, seeing him to much better effect. Two pound rise for his troubles, not ideal. But as I say, I feel that everything could align well for Spanish Blaze. 11 to 1, I feel a little bit cheeky mm. in terms of the long shot, especially when Dex snapped him. But I'll still side <laughs> with Spanish Blaze then as the long shot. Now, Alazi is another one then to be boosted for my nap. Four to five on screen, he's been boosted to even money, which I, feel, I think feels about right for him. With the class to the four, slight few quirks, even money feels about right. So I will be taking advantage of that boost on the website hopefully you do likewise but that's everything from us on this week's show so great to be reunited with the lads and thank you very much for a pair of you two for all of your hard work and disagreements as <laughs> ever big thank you to you at home for watching best of luck with your bets this weekend we'll be back at the same time next week to preview the pick of the weekend action